Will we see Master Chief's armor set within the multiplayer? When can we expect some campaign DLC? And does the battle pass for six years kind of showcase the amount of work that was put into the game? Well, I'll answer that and a whole lot more in this video. If you want to know more, well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now, as I do from time to time, I go to my community page here on YouTube and I ask you guys a question if there's anything you want to know more about Halo Infinite. And you guys certainly replied a lot. So this is kind of like the part two of that question that I put up on my channel, guys. If you ever want to catch these when they do go live, so make sure to subscribe to the channel that keeps you up to date whenever these posts do go live and also give you a general chance to interact with the community a little bit more. So I picked out a few more questions from this guys and I want to answer them for you all. If you like these kind of discussion videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. The first question here comes from Alan asking, what do you think about having a Master Chief armor set in the multiplayer? Well, good news for you there, Alan. It seems like some leaks have gone out recently showing that there might just be a Master Chief armor core going out for us maybe within season two or something like that. On Twitter, SirAsia right here, who's kind of been known as a good source for comes leaked content for Halo Infinite, posted this up saying the various cores that are gonna be in Halo Infinite. We see one just being the Olympus core, which is like the Mark VII armor core that we have. Then we have the Reach core, the Samurai core, and then MC117, which would definitely make you think the Master Chief. I mean, what else would it be? And I remember during the flights, we actually saw this armor core right here as part of like the initial sign in for the Halo Waypoint app. And so this is definitely a Master Chief armor core right here. So and it's a Mark VI Gen 3, which is exactly the armor set that the Master Chief has within Halo Infinite. Now, all this certainly could just be placeholder material that they didn't have, like, want to show any kind of actual armor cores in the game yet because it'd be a bit of a leak. Though I totally feel it would be possible to have Master Chief's armor set within the game. It'd be kind of cool to have, like, your own Master Chief kind of armor set along with playing the multiplayer. So nothing confirmed right now, but I would say it looks good for a Master Chief armor set to come into Halo Infinite's multiplayer, but this kind of ties into what I think the next question kind of plays off of as well. Kevin Monahan asks, will we get to have our multiplayer Spartan show up in the campaign like Reach? Will we be able to customize weapon and vehicle skins for the campaign much like MCC? I think that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, I really do hope that we get a chance to play as our multiplayer Spartan within the campaign for like co-op if you want to do it that way uh well one reason why we could do that is because your spartan like your actual spartan that you play as within the multiplayer is part of canon so it would make sense for like your spartan to go on to zeta halo to help out the master chief with whatever kind of tasks he has available for us and maybe bringing over that multiplayer spartan could be one of the reasons why we had this campaign co-op delayed for so long i know they've mentioned about being able to replay missions different game states and unlocks and things like that which does get things very complicated when it comes to like a live service kind of open world type of game uh, but I think another thing would be having your multiplayer Spartan be playable as well and I think the reason why they haven't mentioned that yet is maybe just because they want to have some kind of cool surprise or kind of some new reveal when co-op goes live rather than just being like okay it's live you guys can go co-op whatever you want I think they want to have a little bit more of a surprise element too or something kind of more interactive than just like being able to play with your friends oftentimes 343 tends to try to do a little bit extra than just like release a feature they want to release a feature with maybe something new to do or have some new kind of feature or element to it to kind of spice things up a little bit more because co-op has just been around for halo well since ever pretty much uh, i just find it hard to believe that 343 couldn't get just like regular old campaign co-op to work unless there was something extra tied to it that maybe some integrated system that I was just not really agreeing with at the moment or something. It's only really heard that it's just gonna take a little extra time and then some parts of like game states are a little tricky to take into consideration, but I just, I don't know, I just feel like there's something else hiding behind this uh, this wall of secrets that 343 is hiding from us to give us a co-op. But yeah, I absolutely would love to have my multiplayer sparring part of the campaign. I think it'd be sweet. That LI Gamer guy asked, do you think 343 already has campaign DLC lined up ready to go for us and they'll slowly drip feed it to us? Or do you think they have maybe one or two ideas ready to go and they'll see what the community wants and creates off of that? 
Well, one thing I can almost guarantee you guys, like obviously I'm not a developer, I don't work for 343, but I can pretty much almost already guarantee you that there, there is some work already being done when it comes to a new expansion to the campaign. Campaign DLC has been a huge talk of discussion because we haven't heard any information about what the future of story expansions are going to be for Halo Infinite. We do know Halo Infinite is going to be Halo as a platform, game as a service. It's going to be the Halo game for the next 10 years but there is a lot of things up in the air when it comes to how exactly will they go about adding more stories because Halo Infinite, this is not gonna be like the only campaign for the next 10 years. Like that's just not gonna happen. Even on the Halo Waypoint site, when you click on Halo Infinite, when you scroll down, it says campaigns with an S right there. Then you know that there's gonna be more than just one campaign. It's gonna be multiple ones you find through Halo Infinite. And as we covered previously on the channel that, that Microsoft did also file a trademark for Halo The Endless, which would kind of make sense from the campaign from what we played. Also gaming news insider Jess Corden did say this about the current development of Halo Infinite and sound like another game being developed alongside of it. We've talked about this before and I think you've said this in other places, but you do expect 343 to make another game that's not Halo Infinite. Yeah, yeah, they are working on another project that isn't Halo Infinite. I know that much. Okay. So seeing that trademark and also seeing Jazz Corden right there just talking about how he knows that 343 is working on a Halo related project, not exactly Halo Infinite, but something else out there, that there is definitely something within the works that's going on right now at 343 when it comes to more storytelling, more campaign probably type of experiences, but we just don't know quite yet. That's kind of the nature of leaks. So you just kind of take people at their word because you're never going to find a leak of like something about Halo and then actually tie that to like Bonnie Ross or something, you know what I mean? But you better believe it if I get any concrete information about what the next kind of story is going to be added into either Halo Infinite or a new game coming around, you know I'm going to share it here on the channel, guys. So make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with all the good stuff. The Space Hunter Tracy says, How do you personally feel about the battle pass and lack of content knowing this game was in the making for six years? I mean, we all know the issues in the past six years of development. It just seems there's a lot of content that's missing and most of it, if they do get anything, it's within the shop right there, which I totally understand, understand that frustration like a lot because there's a lot of stuff within Halo Infinite right now that is, well, not really where you want it to be. Like custom games are pretty shoddy right now. Not a whole lot of experiences you can have right there compared to what we've been able to have traditionally for a Halo game. Theater mode's kind of whack as well. Specifically about the battle pass that yeah, yeah, the battle pass for season one, I don't think it was like that bad. It certainly wasn't like amazing or anything where you're like, oh my God, I have to grind out the next tier to get like this next piece of customization. It might seem a little lackluster because they really focused on the Halo Reach armor core. So within the Halo Reach armor core, there's tons of customization available. But say you want to rock the Mark 7 or you want to rock the Yorai, well, there really isn't a whole lot there. And also the entire six years wasn't spent like making Halo Infinite. It was spent like help building up towards actually making Halo Infinite. Don't get me wrong about that. Um, first couple of years were definitely spent on working on the engine. I mean, the first time we actually saw any form of like kind of gameplay-esque like material was in 2019 for Discover Hope, which was just like the intro cinematic, which even that changed a lot from what we saw from what we from the trailers compared to what we saw in game. I fully expect to see huge improvements when it comes to season two, when it comes to the battle pass. We already know this from Jerry Hook saying thanks to your continued feedback we are happy to confirm credits will be earnable in season 2's battle pass that means you'll be able to earn credits as part of your halo infinite progression we'll have more to share on this as we get closer to season 2. and also i would say from what i've seen from 343 well, at least when it comes to at least like the 10 right battle pass right complete overhaul from level 10 and above and also from when the leaks that i saw of winter contingency and the leaks i saw about the cyber showdown event it was going to be like a lot of like double xp tokens and like challenge swaps which isn't exactly something that's fun grinding out for when it comes to the winter contingency we had some decent content on that you can grind for same thing with the cyber showdown event as well and so we have a full-on new season battle pass i fully expect that to be much more rich in content and i would hope to be more fair to the free-to-play players as well because the free to bit players like got basically nothing when it comes to customization except for like some 
Mark 7 customization, but for the most part, it was like challenge swaps and double XP tokens. I know that people say like it's been six years and we get this kind of game, but I think a big thing you gotta take in consideration, guys, is the pandemic. Like directly affected the development of Halo Infinite. We saw that with the 2020 reveal that people were like, oh, this is not looking that good. A lot of technical issues with this. They got that extra year delayed in there, but even then, it still slowed down the process a lot. I guarantee you that 3 for 3 lost months of development time during the most crucial time of development as well because of the pandemic and having to redo a lot of things. And even when 343 came back to the office, right, uh, it wasn't exactly like how it was previously. And we saw this in the August development update, where you can see they're working on test builds of Halo Infinite here on different systems, and you have a webcam looking at the screens, everyone on a call saying, hey, uh, rewind that back a little bit. You can kind of see how that would definitely slow down the process when it comes to the development of this game. Again, like this was pandemic during literally the most crucial time of development. Like that last year was where you really start locking things down and polishing things up a lot. And you can see that the way they have their whole thing set up was definitely not optimal and not what everyone's used to, but you know, they had to make do with what they could do with what the uh, world was allowing them to do. Also losing leads, like we had like a campaign lead that left. Uh, I can't remember her name, but we also had like Tom Longo, I forget remember his name correctly and then of course Chris Lee leaving bringing in then we had Joseph Stain so change of leadership change of directions and things like that so it was a messy bumpy road but we got there and let's say the game that we got I wouldn't say is necessarily bare bones but certainly is a core type of experience when it comes to Halo I mean for me the launch was totally fine you got a good campaign you got enough multiplayer modes for me I just play Slayer BTB and like ranked and that's about it you got a lot of guns, you got like some good modes, the gameplay feels really great. So for me, like the launch of Halo Infinite was good. But I can see if you're a custom game guy, if you're a Forge guy, if you really like using theater mode, if you really like playing co-op and things like that, yeah, the launch not being very good for you. But if you're new to the channel and missed any content from recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching, greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.